What's up you guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create three of the most common, most basic types of plot using the matplotlib uh, module in Python. We're gonna cover how to do a basic plot, a scatter plot, and a bar graph using matplotlib and some NumPy. All right, so let's jump right into it. Um, Python is an extremely useful programming tool for data analysis. You've almost certainly heard that if you're a beginner or intermediate Python programmer. And two of the most common uh, tools that you will use in Python for data analysis are NumPy, which is essentially a Python numerical computation module that a lot of the other modules build off of, including matplotlib, which is a really useful mathematical tool for plotting uh, different data sets. So these are both really useful to know if, um, if you want to get into Python for data analysis. So let's just start by importing matplotlib pyplot, which is going to be the piece that we are actually going to use as our plot for all three of the types of graphs that we're going to cover in here today. And we also want to import numpy. And you'll most commonly see this abbreviated just as NP. It's a really easy way to use the numpy module without typing out numpy. But you absolutely could type out numpy if you wanted. Okay, and so real quick, you don't have to worry too much about what this means, but we are going to use a specific style of plot, um, just underscore MPL dash gallery. Okay, so uh, this is kind of one of just a basic command. If you really want to look into the different styles that you can use, matplotlib's documentation is pretty good online. So feel free to look it up if you want to use other styles. Um, and then the actual plot has this thing called subplots that has uh, its figure size and definition in uh, this first variable and then it stores its axes in a second variable. And so again, I, I'm going to try to get through three different types of plot uh, and I can maybe do a longer video on a deep dive into matplotlib in the future. But basically, we want to get this plot.subplots right here in the beginning because we're going to use this to uh, tell our plot later on in our program what the different axes are going to look like, so what our x and y data are going to be made up of. And to do that, we want to break plot.subplots into this fig and ax uh, subparameter, okay? So these variables. And now let's start our basic plot section, okay? So the code we need just to um, make our basic plot. And I will uh, also throw in here that at the very end, you don't wanna forget this step or you'll think that your code is not working. You always wanna make sure you have plot.show at the end because that is what is actually going to display your graph onto the screen. Um, but now, I don't have specific data prepared for this um, for this tutorial, so let's go ahead and make a set of data that are just going to be a sine wave, all right? Um, and to do that, I'm going to use the uh, NumPy linear spacing, um, so lin space, to basically give me um, data from zero to 10, and then I'm gonna say how many points I want in between those, okay? So this is essentially um, saying give me 100 evenly spaced points between 0 to 10. All right, so that is what my x data is going to be. And now I'm going to use uh, that same set of data to give me a sine wave by just saying y equals and then uh, np dot sine and then times x. This would sort of be how I would get a generic sine wave. Now let's go ahead and increase its frequency and amplitude just so it's a little bit more interesting in the span we just defined. Um, and so I'm just gonna add in some variables like four plus. So you should know a normal sine wave will go from one to negative one. Um, and now we're just increasing the speed at which it oscillates here. And then we are going to say that actually ours is going to go from uh, seven to one. So it's gonna, uh, four is gonna replace zero as kind of our uh, y, you know, zero point. And then we can go up three or down three. So it's just a more interesting um, uh, set of data so that you can see this. But so basically this is y sine wave from one to seven. Um, 
and then that'll be our data. And so what we want to do to use this data is we say that x, that axes variable that we already made, dot plot, and then we give it our x set of data, our y set of data, and then an optional variable, because by default it'll give you just one. But an optional variable is also to increase the line width. So I'm gonna go with a line width of two. Um, and that's actually all the setup that we have to do. Now we just have to essentially tell the uh, axes, set the axes with how to display, and then it'll be ready to go. So we do that in x.set, and then we are going to say what we want the x limits of our uh, graph to be, and I want mine to be between zero and eight. So um, I just basically know that I'm going from uh, 0 to 10 and so I'm gonna say the range that I want to display is from 0 to 8 These are the X min and max limits and then uh, just another again This one's optional, but the number of ticks that you want to have um, Show up uh, are going to be a range between 1 and 8. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna copy this whole X dot set um, in innards so this chunk and I'm just gonna copy and then put on a second row the same thing but for the y limit and the y ticks, okay? So basically I'm making a square here that's gonna show me zero to eight in the x and the y direction and give me a tick on my axes every one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? And this is actually it. This like 18 rungs and most of it is spaces. Um, this is pretty much all we need for a basic plot in NumPy. So let's go ahead and run this. And you can see that uh, we get a sine wave. And if you hover your mouse over it, you can see that the low point here for the Y's is one and the high point is seven. And that uh, the right edge of the graph goes up to eight. So you could say, you could set your X limit a little bit higher, like we could set it to 10 and rerun it. And what you'll see now is that you go all the way up to 10. So feel free to read the documentation on matplotlib and start looking at all of the optional parameters um, for basic plots and every other type of plot we cover here. But for now, I'm going to comment out the stuff that is just for the basic plot, and we're going to move on to a scatter plot. I don't want this uh, lesson to get super duper long, um, just in case what you guys are really looking for is a crash course in the three most common, in my opinion, most common types of plots with matplotlib. So let's take a look at a basic scatter plot. Um, okay, and so uh, to do this, you may have noticed that I, ch I commented out the section that was specific to basic plots, but I'm actually leaving uh, these last two commands, the axe.set, plot.show, and my initial setup in here. And that's because the code that I didn't just comment out is much more generic and you can use it for all these different styles of plot. It's this section in here where you're telling it what kind of plot to use. So let's go ahead and take a look at what needs to change um, for a scatter plot. And so let's start by getting some new data. Um, I think first let's get some randomized X and Y data. That's kind of the most interesting scatter plot anyways. So we'll use a normal random distribution um, <clears throat> for our uh, X data and we'll just say um, that we want it to be um, centered on zero uh, and then we give it a scale and size of two and then 24. Um, and then we'll go ahead and get Y randomized data as well. That will be, uh, and I say centered on zero because we're adding four to it. So really the values that you'll see are centered on four, four but our random data that we're grabbing is centered around zero, um, plus or minus two. So now we're gonna do the same thing for y, random, normal, and then zero, two. And then here, uh, one thing that's nice to make sure you get two lists of the same length is that you can use length of x instead of just 24. And this is just a smarter way of doing it because if you were to ever decide you wanted a larger or smaller sample size, now they would grow together uh, or shrink together. So that is a good idea to do. 
And I'll just throw in here that the three variables we're giving it are the location, which is also known as center, and then uh, scale, and then size. And again, NumPy, super common and well-documented, so uh, I'm trying to cover a lot of content in this video in a pretty short time frame. If you have any specific questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Now, two things that we'll do to our scatter plot that make it a little bit more interesting um, is we'll do sizes and colors uh, randomized as well. So for our sizes list, we'll go ahead and do np.random, and then this one we'll do uniform instead. Um, again, feel free to look up the difference, but uh, basically we're going to give it a low point, a high point, and then a total size. And since we want uh, all of our lists to have the same number of points, we're going to use length of x again for sizes. And we'll do something very similar for our colors list, np.random.uniform, and we'll go from 15 to 80, and we'll make it length of x, okay? So, I think I have an extra set of parameters around that length of x. I did, yeah, but now I don't. Um, and so again, just to reiterate, the arguments that we're giving it here are low, high, and then size, okay? Those are the three things that we put in those uh, np.random.uniform. Now let's actually create the plot. Um, and for this, we need to give it the x and y arrays of data, and then the sizes and colors are optional, um, but we made the list, so we may as well use them. And then the data range uh, for color map is going to be something that we pass in as well because we are generating um, a color mapping with that colors list. So for this, it's x.scatter instead of x.plot. And then it is going to be x data, y data. And then you need to use s equals sizes and c equals colors. And then the color mapping minimum and maximum. So that is vmin0 and vmax. Uh, to 100. So that's where this 15 to 80 comes into play. We're saying, all right, our lightest color would be zero, our darkest color would be 100. So let's make all of our data somewhere in between like 15 and 80. So they'll all be pretty easy to uh, see, but also distributed all over the map, okay? So I know this has gotten a little bit trickier to read, especially because I've commented out plot code there in the middle, but hopefully you're taking away that this stuff here is scatter plot specific, creating our X set of data, our Y set of data, the data sizes and colors, and then this x.scatter plugging the information in there. We can leave our x.set as is and our plot.show as is. Let's run it now and take a look at what we get, okay? And so hopefully you can see we get this interesting uh, distribution of points. It actually uh, looks very spread out when I make it full screen. Um, but you can see on here they're varying in colors and sizes because of that randomizer function that we set up. Um, but they're all over the map, and uh, if you don't believe that it's random, you can just run it again, and uh, you'll get a totally different graph the second time, okay? So that obviously looks a lot different than the second one. Um, now, that is all I'm gonna say about scattered plots for now. Again, leave comments uh, below if you have them. I'm sure there are things that you might wonder about that we haven't covered in here. But let's take a look at the third and final for this tutorial, um, which we're gonna do is the bar graph. So start the bar graph section, okay? And so first, let's go ahead and make the data again. And I'm just gonna say, uh, let's make this x from a half and then plus numpy dot arrange a range, a range of eight. Okay, so this is just gonna give us a nice ordered list going up um, from 0.5. Now let's make our Y data random, um, and then we'll use that uniform again. <coughs> Excuse me. And we'll do two, seven, and length of X, just again to make sure that we are getting um, two lists of the same size. So uh, let's just make it clear here that what we did in here was um, low, high, and then total size. So our values should be between two and seven. We're going to have a bar for each of them of, uh, of uh, we're gonna have eight total bars is what I was trying to say poorly there. 
And now let's go ahead and take a look at plot the bar graph. So that's all we're gonna do for the bar graph in terms of data is just to arrange our X data nice and orderly and then get some random Y values. Um, obviously, I'm not pulling from real data sets here because I'm just showing you how to make the graphs. If you have any questions how to apply your data set over top of it, throw a comment down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. All right, but for a bar graph, all we need are the X and Y arrays of data, and then we'll establish an edge, an edge color and a line width just to show you some of the stylistic things that you can do, okay? And so instead of x.scatter or x.plot, we're gonna go with x.bar and then X and Y, and then width of, we'll just say one, feel free to play around with that if you want. The edge color, I will make white, and you'll see that when we boot it up. And then the line width uh, will be equal to one. So width is how wide you actually want the bars to be. And then uh, line width is going to be how many pixels wide you want the edges around your bars to be, okay? So those are really the only things that you need to know. I will say that uh, lim is the axis range to show and that ticks is where to start and how many to show. I have that comment in my notes uh, to put it down here, but I guess I never threw it down. So basically, limit x, y, lim, and uh, x, lim, and y, lim, and I do think I talked about it, I just didn't leave a good comment, is saying the range our axis is going to show, and then ticks is, uh, is the range of of yeah ticks that we're going to show on the x and y axis okay so let's boot this up and take a look at what we just created with a bar graph all right and so uh hopefully what you can see is we have eight total bars and the reason i guess i didn't touch on this but the reason we used x at 0.5 is because that is the center point of each bar so if we make them one wide centered on a half and then we do eight of them um, it's going to be centered on 0.5, uh, 1.5, 2.5, 3.5, but it's going to go half of a bar in each direction. So, uh, and then you can see our Y values are random between uh, two and seven. So that seemed to work pretty good. Hopefully you understand how to basically replace my X and Y lists of just sort of quickly thrown together data with more useful data that applies to your situation. Um, but so that is all I wanna say about this super quick crash course in some of the most basic matplotlib graphs. Of course, if you have any questions about what you saw in this video or would like to see some specific su stuff on the channel in the future, just let me know about in the comments below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, bye.